Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming out this afternoon. And, uh, well, it's a very, very exciting time here at AVR as we welcome our newest member, uh, Robert Swartzman, who will be my teammate. And who is, um, how old are you, mate? 12? Anyway, he's fast. And that's, uh, that's the main thing. Now, do we have any questions? Um, yeah. Chaz Hogan, Australian journalist. Now, listen, mate, why have you kicked Markalov to the curb mid-season? Yeah, look, mate, I mean, Artem tried his best, God love him, but, uh, you know, ultimately, it just wasn't quite good enough. But I think in Robert, we've got uh, we've got a driver who we can really make a long-term investment in, and he can, uh, you know, make a career here at Aussie Villain Racing. I'm Vladimir Popov, a reporter from the Madalasha. Now, you have replaced one Madalashan with another Madalashan. That's very observant, Vlad. Thank you. I am uh, Giuseppe Tortellini, and I am only here because this is the Italia Grand Prix. Uh, we have got to start checking these journalists' credentials. Hi guys, I'm Aussie Villain, and welcome to episode 12, the Italian Grand Prix here in season 1 at Aussie Villain Racing. And today, well, we have a new teammate, so we'll get a first look at them, Robert Swartzman. He has uh, signed a million dollars. He's on. Uh, Markolov ended up wanting 1.5. If we go to the driver market, you can see if we uh, were just above us there. Markolov wanted 1.5, so it's a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, Swartzman is higher rated, and I think you guys tended to agree the feedback that you gave me. Uh, he's higher rated, he's cheaper. It did kind of just make a little bit of sense, didn't it? And I do think Robert Swartzman could be somebody that we could maybe, maybe try and sort of make our long-term teammate. We'll see how things go, obviously. But I'm assuming that he's going to be able to improve. And, I mean, he's already he's already better than Mazapan. He's already roughly at Latifi's level. So there's no reason why, you know, we couldn't grow with him. Because uh, let's face it, if we're going to win a world championship at Aussie Villain Racing, it's probably not going to be me that wins it. It's probably going to be the teammate. And maybe we can turn Robert Swartzman into a world champion, or certainly a driver that can take us a fair way towards that goal. But if we go back and have a look at facilities, one thing that has happened, if we go to the powertrain department here, you can see that uh, we spent a little bit of money on quality control. Uh, so that's 1.2 million, obviously a million to Robert Swartzman, 1.2 million for the quality control. Um, so that is going to be done soonish. Uh, not for this, not in time for this race. There was only a one one day, uh, one week. Sorry, one week gap between the two races, some last race and this race. If we have a look at R and D, you can see there are no new parts on the car for this one. It looks as though we've fallen behind uh, Alfa Romeo, who looked to have taken a big step forward in the in the graph there on the left uh, right hand side. Sorry. But we do have another major upgrade coming in the uh, in the chassis weight distribution engine cover, uh, so that will be there for that will be there for the uh, Singapore Grand Prix, which is not this one, not the next one, but the one after that. So uh, race is coming thick and fast, so it takes a little bit of time in terms of races to get the, the parts on. But the other two should be there for the next race, which is the Russian Grand Prix and the progress history. There we go. We can see. We've maybe just dropped off the bottom of the four uh, teams that are that we're battling with there in uh, Alpine, Alpha Romeo, Alpha Tori, and ourselves. So hopefully getting Robert Swartzman in will help uh, help us develop the car a little bit quicker. Power unit, of course, we took a fresh unit of everything, having qualified at the back for the last race. And Esteban Alcon made sure we only ever did a lap. So this is all basically brand new stuff. Monza is very much a power track. So that means that uh, we'll, we'll have fresh engines for that, which is good. Uh, we are getting a new gearbox. There's no penalty for that. The previous gearbox had done it six races. So that's uh, that's all good uh, good news. In terms of the corporate side of stuff, sponsorship, it's still the same. Uh, our qualifier rival, we'll get on to Ocon in just a second here. Uh, the finances, you can see there, excuse me, the running cost, the facility upgrade, and then the driver contract negotiations, and uh, also the rest of... Uh, the rest of our income there. I don't know what vehicle damage refunds is. Obviously, we prepay a certain amount of damage. No, we destroyed a car. Or Ocon destroyed the car. Maybe he paid some of it out of cash. Uh, we can see the finances there. And if we go and have a look at the standings, there is how our rivalry is stacked up right now against Ocon. Uh, we are one point, I guess, down, one category down. So not ideal, but it is what it is. And we can see there our second DNF of the season in Zanvoort last race. Uh, season results again we can see them all there and the standings we are still 12th though we have a little bit of a gap now uh to gasly and aussie villain racing four points back behind alpha tauri if Swartzman can maybe chip in with some points it would be nice wouldn't it but um let's not hold our breath the car isn't quite 
I don't think, in a point scoring position yet on a regular basis. So we'll click our way back to the Italian Grand Prix. Let's head off to Monza. So we'll check our messages. We can see the circuit map there. It's it's trickier than it looks, but it is relatively straightforward. The weather forecast, it's going to be a dry race, dry qualifying. That is good news. And the performance comparison, we can see there that we have actually dropped down now. We are the third worst team in Formula 1, in theory. Hopefully, we'll be able to prove that wrong. I'm going to go do some free practice, guys. I will see you for qualifying one. All right, welcome to qualifying. Free practice is done. It's gone well. I won't, I won't tell a lie. We've been in the top 10 each and every session. So Q3 is a possibility, though there is some warning signs there. Maybe not. If we come around to start our first attempt in Q3, the reason I say maybe not is because hey, I've, I've put good sectors together, but I've struggled to get whole laps. Uh, but also, if you look at the, and now it's all on the Discord, but if you look at uh, the, t the time sheets, it's very, it's not the same drivers that are in front of us or behind us all the time. So it, it, it might be a little bit misleading in that we may not, that is such a Mickey Mouse corner. Uh, yeah, we may not actually be a top 10 car. Uh, Robert Schwartzman's done okay. He's uh, sort of been where you'd expect him in the low teens. Um... So, I mean, for a first attempt, you know, that's that's fine for him this weekend. I'm not quite sure who we're following here. Looks like an Alpine. Is it, oh, it is Esteban Ocon, our rival. Well, thank you, Esteban. You're about to drag us down the last two straights. So, appreciate that, mate. Hopefully, we'll be one and done here. Oh, that corner is intense. No DRS on this straight, but we'll sit in these drafts. And closing in. Just the Palabolic at the go. Maybe a little bit of dirty air there, which hasn't helped us. i tell you what. Out of my way, Esteban. I'm coming through, mate. And fastest lap. There we go. So we have indeed topped an Australian 1-2 in qualifying. You'd love to see that. We were massively helped there by that Ocon draft. Uh, I'm not sure how much it's worth, but it's obviously worth a lot um, because we're not as quick as a McLaren or a Mercedes. That is not something that happens. So it's got to be worth a good half a second, doesn't it? Two straights that long. Um, but anyway, if we go down, Esteban Ocon has missed out. So we've out-qualified him for the rivalry. That's good. Robert Schwartzman, look at that. Only... What's that? A tenth of a second outside of progressing, and we never saw Markolov, I don't think, anyway, get out of Q1. So, a promising start from Schwartzman. He can take Ocon out for us in the first corner, but we're going to progress on to qualifying two. All right, we're coming around to start our lap. Now, knowing how much we have to, of course, we have to start on this set of tires if we were to get through to Q3, and knowing how much starting on the used stock tires hurt us in Belgium. We've got a car in front of us here, so a nice addition. We're going to try a lap on the medium to see if we can do a sneaky, a sneaky lap to get us out of. I haven't nailed that as well as I did it the first time around, and see if we can get out of uh, Q2 on the medium tire, which will put us in a better, better shape for the race then as well. Um, but it is a little bit of a risk, obviously, and not nailing that first chicane is not going to have helped the situation. I really got that one either. There is definitely less grip, and I'm not always the quickest to adapt to that, I don't think. Let's see what we can do here. We're not as close to the Ferrari as we were to Ocon either, I don't think, so we're not going to get much of a draft. And this experiment may not be going to work. Let's see what we can do to end the lap here. Actually, had a little bit left on the outside there, didn't I? I could have gone a little bit quicker, perhaps. But yeah, you can see we're nowhere near as close as we were to Ocon, so we're not going to get the same sort of draft. Let's see if we can get a good exit from the Parabolica and see what we can do. We were 120 on the Super Soft. We're way, way off that. Let's try this again. All right, we put on the Super Softs. I've had one go already and stuffed it up. So this is do or die now. Two minutes, three minutes to go. We could get two laps in if we, we have the time, but do we have the tyres? And we don't want to get into Q3 with the worn super softs. We got that from Belgium, didn't we? Let's see if we can get a good exit here. It's not great. It's terrible. And that'll do it. All right. We've cruised around for the rest of that lap. 
We have a minute to go. We're behind Verstappen. So he shouldn't be slow enough through the corners for us to catch, but he should be able to give us a tow. Tires are going to be worn, but we've got to try and improve, don't we? Ah, uh, for f Well, I suddenly forgot how to take that chicane, didn't I? What a moron. So we'll be starting in 15th. We did manage to get Giovinazzi. Yeah, I, I mean, we were, what, six, seven tenths out of doing it on the mediums. We should have we should have been in Q3 today, though. That is really, really disappointing. But, um, well, on to the race. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and Lando Norris lines up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Ricardo, Verstappen, Charles Leclerc and Sainz, Perez, Vettel, Stroll, and Yuki Tsunoda, Gasly, Bottas, Fernando Alonso, and Raikkonen, Oldtimer, Giovinazzi, Esteban Ocon, and Robert Schwartzman, Mick Schumacher, Mazepin, Russell, and Nicholas Latifi. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Ah, oh, you look at those qualifying times. We could have been right at the front of the grid today, but instead, we are where we are. I'm going to try not inverting the strategy this time. I'm going to start on softs like everybody else, and then we're going to go to mediums. I think we're quick enough to move forward and get points here. I don't think we need to be clever to do it, so we're not going to be. Let's see what we can do, though. Hopefully, I can take the first chicane properly. So here we go, Italian Grand Prix. Always a hectic start to this one, the two chicanes back-to-back, -back, but... We're a lot further back than I think we should have been. We had the pacing qualifying to go further. And we've got a decent start. Able to move to the inside as well. In behind Bottas. Let's see if we can follow him into this first chicane. Maybe build that little bit further of a dive. Now, can I get through here without spinning? Conscious there. We've got <laughs> a little bit of contact with an Alfa Tori. Uh, Sonoda, it looks like. Well, he's hit us a million times, so that's fine. Um, yeah, we're very, very, very conscious there of not passing off the track. But uh, look at that. Bottas on our outside. Out of the way, Valtteri. We're coming through, mate. To pick the braking point here. He's pulled back in behind us. Not our brake myself. That's a decent, uh, decent attempt there. Decent effort as well. And now we can hopefully put eyes forward. And I've got a little bit deep, a little bit wide onto the curb. And oh, I've hit Bottas and I've taken his front wing. Sorry, Valtteri. But onto the dirt and uh, sort of spat me back out, didn't it? And into the path of Bottas. And he's now going to hold up a little bit of a train behind us, which should mean. We can start and put our eyes forward and try and catch Fernando Alonso in 12th. So 13th, we made a couple of places off the line there, which is good. A little bit wide again. But yeah, Bottas definitely uh, holding people up. And that's, um, well, that's my bad, isn't it? Into the Parabolica for the first time. Corner that is very easy to get wrong, but very easy to get. So we'll get wrong either going too slow or too fast, to be honest. But that brings us to the end of the first lap. We'll skip ahead now to uh, the second lap, coming through the Parabolica for the second time. We have caught up with Alonso. Of course, it's Draft Central, isn't it, at Monza, the Temple of Speed. We go in behind. We're on the button to overtake. The DRS, DRS is enabled. It doesn't help us here, though, on Alonso, but we're up the inside. He's pulling back in behind us, and that should be move done as we... Oh, no, he's back on the outside. We'll just close him off there. He's still there, though, isn't he? And he's got a decent exit. I don't mean to squeeze him that badly. It's just to <laughs> seem to accelerate off corners. And on the button again, we can have another look here. He's He's gone so, so deep, hasn't he, to stick on our outside. But, yeah, just squeezed him in. I didn't mean to do that, as I said. But we'll, have, we'll push him out while we're there. And that looks to be job done on Alonso. But in that little battle, we can see Sonoda has pulled out, what, 1.5 seconds. So that's not ideal. So we'll skip ahead again now to the beginning of lap four. We have Sonoda in our sights up ahead there. We're not on the overtake button here. This is just the case of, um, well, very, very early on the brakes there for that battle. You can see that it's, it's, it's Stroll and Gasly that are battling in front of us. Again, we pull to the inside, just pull, oh, and then pull back in front of Fernando Alonso. Proof there that I'm not doing it on purpose every lap. It just seems to be coming off that corner. When I put the gas down, that's what happens. But we've uh, definitely opened up the door there for pressure from Alonso again, haven't we? But uh, so there's a bit of a train there. Is it Sainz at the front of that train or is it uh, might be Sergio Perez, it looks like? 
but we're definitely on the back of a train of cars here, so let's hope that we can um, we can pick them off one by one here. Only a 13 lap race. And we saw in qualifying, we should be faster than most, if not all of these cars in front. I think we, were, we had the pace in qualifying, which is so frustrating to be a top five on the grid, but um, anyway, what's the difference between fifth and 16th, or 15th, wherever we started? But again, a little bit wide coming out of that Ascari chicane. Tuck into the draft. DRS, remember, is available. It's got to be within the second of Sonoda, which we currently are. And then we should be able to draft right up the back of him and maybe even have a little sneaky dive. A little bit wide there for me. You can see the, the puff of dust. But let's see if we are close enough here. We're closing in. We're on the overtake button. Are we close enough? It's questionable, isn't it? Sonoda, he breaks early. We dive up the inside. Don't hit the back of Gasly, Aussie villain. And we'll squeeze Sonoda, not really that well. Good, good job, nice overtake. And it looks like Alonso and Sonoda. We'll have another look here. How close did we get to the back of Gasly? And then I just couldn't quite turn back enough, could I? But in the end, we get it done. Sonoda and Alonso can fight it out behind us. And we'll put our eyes forward and try and get to Gasly. Up to 11th, so just outside of the points. Going well. We de we're definitely quicker than the cars in front. There's points there for us this race, isn't there? Not the best I've ever taken that chicane, but uh, anyway. Go back on board. Am I going to uh, break myself again? Yeah, a little bit wide out onto the... No, we managed to keep it in track limits, which is good. Now, of course, there is a DRS zone coming up here, and it mucked up that entrance, and therefore the exit. So Noda is right behind us. We're on the overtake button, but I don't know there's much we're going to be able to do with Sonoda and his DRS over. We tuck back in behind. Can we have another go back into the Akata Scari chicane? There's not much point in doing that. I think our best bet to get him back now, and again, not the best exit there, but our best chance is to sit in behind him, wait for the uh, DRS on the front straight, and we should be able to get straight back past him. Into the parabolica we go. Going a little bit wide, just trying to alternate the lines there to keep the, the front air in our wing so we get the, the traction and the grip through the corner. Almost going to the pit lane, so Noda tries to squeeze us to the wall. Gap to the car ahead is 2.6 seconds. But this time we've got the DRS, and he has to pull in behind us, and this should be job done. And I tell you what, I haven't taken that chicane too badly either, have I? And on the gas, nice. Oh no, it's still to the inside. <laughs> but uh, that should be, hopefully, the last we see of Sonoda. But he's an aggressive little bugger, isn't he? He just doesn't go away. Is he going to come back to add us at this chicane, the second chicane? Very close to breaking onto the... Oh, and I've outbroke myself. So that's not ideal. That is going to give Sonoda another chance. And of course, we know there's another DRS zone coming up here. Let's just say I was purposely blocking to the inside there. Trying to get out and break the draft. But it looks as though he hasn't got the best uh, exit there. We've got en enough of a gap now that we should be safe down this straight. And then hopefully pull that a little bit further to the uh, next DRS zone, but I haven't taken that corner very well again, have I? Another little kick up of dust, and that is job done there. So we'll skip ahead now to lap 7. We are still, well actually we're in 10th now. Why is my overtake drought, uh, Why is my overtake going down when I'm not on the button? Jeff? Jeff? So that's not good. Our last stop, no more scheduled pit stops. So thankfully that issue seems to have resolved itself. We come out of the pits right with Pierre Gasly again. We've got the inside line there. We should, on the medium tires, be able to see that through. You haven't taken the chicane great again, have I? But we can see we've got uh, we're still right in that battle in front of us with Science and Stroll, Vettel's up there as well, and Perez. You're in the top ten now. Keep it up. But that pass on Gasly, as Jeff just said there, has put us into the points. And we can see Stroll, Science, they're right there in front of us. This is looking as though we could be on for at least 8th position here. Again, I run a little bit wide through that first Lesmo. Across to block Gasly. We've done just about enough there so far. But again, DRSO. Not a great start. DRSO coming up. Not a great start, I was saying there, on the uh, on these mediums. Yellow. yellow flag. So yellow flag coming in here. Now that helps us. That means that... We can't get overtaken. Some information on Verstappen. They are and there's Verstappen the off to the right-hand side there. You may have seen it out of the race. I'm assuming a mechanical failure. Green flag. That puts us up now to ninth. 
with Sites and Stroll in front of us up to 7th, which I think would be our equal best result, wouldn't it? But can I, we've seen me before, struggle on the medium tyres and <laughs> signs there aren't great, are they? But let's see what we can do here. Need to try and get into DRS of this battle in front, Sites and Stroll. Yeah, if we can get, if we can, get into their DRS within a second. Looks like there's a knock up there, but I don't think it was us. But if we can get into this battle, into the DRS zone of these guys in front of us, it will protect us, of course, from the DRS behind as well. So we need to make up about, what's that, two, three tenths of a second on these two in front, and then we can sort of be in that DRS train and hopefully pick them off one at a time. There's four laps of fuel remaining. Again, I go deep into Lesmo 1, and it's uh, just struggle on medium tires, don't I? I think the problem that I have is that I, I don't I don't adapt. I try and go as fast as I was able to with the grip of the reds and the soft tires, and it just costs me every time. Okay, gap ahead is 1.5 seconds. So 1.5 seconds now in front. So we've lost a couple of tenths this lap, very wide again. That's just down to trying to go too fast and a lack of grip. And with Gasly now right behind us coming into the uh, main straight and the DRS zone, we could be in a little bit of trouble here again. Gasly is very much in our, uh, in our DRS zone and he's got a much better exit than us. He is right behind us before the DRS even opens. And again, we're really going to struggle to hold him behind us here. Let's see. Oh, dive bomb back up the inside. And can we keep him there? We can force him wide. And Gasly and Sonoda will now battle behind us. On the overtake button, have another look at it. A deep, deep dive on the brakes. And we do just enough to force Gasly out of the way. And then you can see the two Alpha Tauris behind us. Stuck in a little bit of a battle now. Sonoda in front of Gasly. But that's, uh, that's one for them to sort out, isn't it? But we can see Sonoda drafting up behind us again here. This is, uh, he's on the outside. We do have the racing line. And we are able to get it stopped and turned in. So that uh, is that done. Now, of course, these Lesmos where I've messed it up more times than I haven't. This time, I managed to get something like an apex on the corner. And we have got a little bit of a gap coming onto this back straight with the DRS. Sonoda is still in the DRS zone, but he's far enough back that he's not going to cause us any problems. And in fact, he's got his own problem with his teammate Gasly behind us. You can see they're going side by side into this corner, and I think it looks as though Sonoda's going down. There was contact there. Yellow flags are out, you can see behind us. So, contact between the two teammates. And that's given us just a little bit of a gap. 0.8 of a second. If we can get out of the DRS range of Gasly behind us, it would take the pressure off from behind, and then we could sort of eyes forward. But you can see Stroll is now over three seconds in front of us where we're losing. We've lost him, basically, because there's two laps to go. And ninth, it's not a bad effort, but look at this train of cars. It could still be so much worse, couldn't it? A bad exit as well. Can we keep Gasly behind us? We're on the overtake button, as you can see. Well, I'm not sure what the issue was with the overtake button before, but it seemed to have solved itself. An interesting camera, something different, uh, another view here that we have side of the cockpit it looks like. Uh, but we come into this first Lesmo and... Oh, I've gone in too far the other way this time. I've driven on the inside of the track. What an idiot. Second Lesmo, decent exit there. And that is uh, Gasly. Well, he's not going to threaten us down this straight now, is he? Off the overtake button. We don't need to be wasting the battery power if he's not going to get us. We have two DRS zones to survive now. We're coming on to start the last lap. And look at that. Oh, Gasly so much quicker off that corner. He is right behind us. And this is not good. Coming on to the last lap. He's looking for the inside at the Parabolica. Good luck with that one, mate. Take the air off his front wing. Hopefully that'll drop him far enough back. But I've got in there a little bit too hot. Which has brought him straight back on our back. And as we go to start the final lap, Gasly with DRS is already alongside us. Have we thrown away ninth place? We duck back in behind. Can we have another dive bomb? We get up the inside, roll it in there, and squeeze him out. Good job. Now, can we hit back and accelerate? 
we can just about. Gasly and Alonso can now battle out behind us. This was uh, this was desperation for me, I'll be honest. We just rolled it in as fast as we could to get up the inside of him. And, uh, well, we were able to force Gasly wide since he was on the outside. But look at this battle behind us now as well. And there's a Kimi Raikkonen's in there as well. Hopefully, if they're battling with each other, Alonso having a little look down the inside. But there's nothing there for him. Again, not the greatest exit. These medium tyres, I struggle every race, don't I? I've really got to practice just being, you know, being uh, that little bit slower to actually be faster because I won't be missing every apex and sliding wide and doing all that sort of stupid stuff. But here we go. Final lap. That was unnecessary on the grass. But final lap, final DRS zone. That should be that. As long as we get a clean exit from here, no one's going to pass us into the parabolic up. And there's not really enough time to uh, look at Strolly. They've absolutely cleared out, haven't they? 4.6 seconds we've lost in not that many laps on medium tyres. But we're coming to the Parabolica for the final time. Alonso's nowhere near us. And that is going to be P9 and some solid points as well. Good battle with Gasly. That's a decent result, that. Two points. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. We recovered okay there, didn't we, from a, a, a dodgy qualifying session, and we get driver of the day as well. Well, we did make quite a few moves. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. Well, it was a good result for the team today. You know, there's no such thing as bad points. Uh, Robert Schwartzman, I thought, was quite impressive on Debu. So, uh, yeah, definitely some positive signs going forward. And uh, Valtteri, look, I'm sorry, mate. My bad. You know I struggle to control the cars, mate. That's on you. So there we go. That was a good battle, wasn't it? I enjoyed that race a lot. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to look back when I'm editing. I'm not sure if we uh, may be responsible for Bottas being where he is. But yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of wheel banging, but I certainly at this point don't think I was uh, to blame for, or at least not uh, fully to blame for any of it. But I mean, if, I just seem to have no grip, and I'm sure I mentioned that in the commentary. I got onto the mediums and just seemed to have, just lacked, just lacked, I guess, confidence in the grip that was going to be there. But you can see how fast this laps. Uh, I think we've got some bonus points today in hindsight. Mr. Uh, uh, Mustapen, <laughs> Max Verstappen dropping out. That was, that was, that was a bonus plate. Sonoda, I'm not sure what happened to him. I don't think I hit him. Uh, but I may well have. But Swartzman, look at that. They're in 16th. Now, he has done first race what Markelov was struggling to do, and that's beat both the Williams and both the Haas. So that's uh, that's not too bad. We're happy with that. And if we have a look at the standings, now, the other good thing about uh, beating Gasly is not so much the Drivers' Championship because we're not going to feature in that anyway. I mean, we're not even going to... We're not really a chance at top 10. But we have closed the gap to Gasly. What we're worried about here is the Constructors, and we are now only one point back of Alpine, two points back of Alpha Tauri. There is a battle on for six in this championship, and we might... We Well... We'll see how we go the rest of the tracks, won't we? But I think there was... Well, when you qualify in uh, top of Q1... You'd like to think there's a little bit more there for you, but uh, in the end, we'll take two points, we'll run, and I will see. Actually, no, I won't. I want to show you the, the rivalry thing, because we have beat Ocon as well, which is good. So this is the rivalry screen to give you an idea um, of, of what it looks like. There is in qualifying, it's just uh, it's just who qualifies, if, uh, who qualifies top and something else. There's only two in qualifying, but that gives you an idea of that, and this is the team acclaim thing. If you guys are watching other series, you would have seen what this all is. Um, Acclaim helps us get sponsors, I believe. So that is all well and good. But there we go, guys. That'll do it for today. If you've enjoyed that, make sure you hit thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. We get our cash bonus payments for meeting Ocon as well. And as I said, I will see you next time for the Russian Grand Prix, Markalov's home race. And um, Markalov's home race, it would have been. It's also Swartzman's home race. So I'll see you next time for that. Take care.